Today we're going to bust five of the biggest myths and misconceptions in 3D printing. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to Makers Muse. My name is Angus and over the years I've been involved in 3D printing, I've seen quite a lot of hype which has been based around misconceptions and myths in 3D printing and not on truths. So I thought I'd make a video on my top five and I'd like to set the record straight. Myth number one, 3D printing has only been around for a few years. 3D printing as a technology has actually been around since the early 1980s with Hideo Kodama being widely recognized as the first to experiment with what we know now as stereolithography. Chuck Hall further pioneered this technology and went on to create the 3D Systems Corporation and Chuck's actually widely recognized as the creator of the STL file format, which we still use today to run our 3D printers. Much due for an overhaul, I think. Most desktop 3D printers you'll know today use a technology called FDM or Fused Deposition Modeling, which was developed in the late 1980s and further commercialized by Stratasys in the 1990s. And just in case you're wondering how established 3D printing or additive manufacturing has been in industry, check out this snippet from my favorite childhood movie from 1998, Small Soldiers. Yep, that is a SLA printing away in the intro to the movie. Although they have used a little bit of movie magic to make it look like it's printing in seconds rather than hours. But still, that is a 3D printer in a movie from the 1990s. Myth number two, you can 3D print anything you can imagine. While 3D printing technologies are hugely empowering, there are still very clear limitations to what you can actually 3D print. For example, we can't currently print multi-materials very well, and technologies that produce full color models, for example, are still either quite expensive or the models produced are very fragile. You also need to be able to physically 3D design what you want to 3D print. In my opinion, this is the largest barrier to 3D printing for most people, which is why I create my own 3D design tutorials here on Maker's Muse. This feeds into number three. You can easily 3D scan something and then 3D print a copy of it. While the idea of a Star Trek replicator is extremely cool and 3D scanning and printing combo machines like the AIO robotic Zeus do exist, 3D scanning is not a easy thing to do and certainly far from an automatic process for all but the most simple of objects. 3D scans almost always need what's known as post-processing, where you go back into the scan and add in detail that wasn't correctly scanned or hidden and delete noise or unwanted detail that was included into the 3D scan mesh. Light also can't go around corners, so you can't 3D scan cavities, and also you can't easily do things like threads where the detail of the scanner might be not high enough, and you might need to remodel that back into your 3D scan. And finally, 3D scanners are very material dependent. You usually can't scan metallic and reflective surfaces, and also the scanners can't see clear surfaces. So when you're scanning objects, often you need to coat them with a white scan spray to make the scanner be able to see and therefore 3D scan the object. Now, 3D scanners will get better over time, absolutely, just as 3D printers have, but don't expect a photocopier-like experience from a 3D scanner anytime soon. So far, I've been fairly negative towards 3D printing as a whole, so my last two myths are actually more like misconceptions, starting with number four. You can't 3D print anything for practical real-world applications. This myth is huge and completely untrue. Now, it's true when desktop 3D printers first hit the market, you were usually limited to quite fragile materials like PLA plastic. However, this has completely changed thanks to modern material science. For example, take Polymaker's Polymax PLA plastic. This has an impact resistance of up to nine times higher than regular PLA, making it perfect for real world practical prints. Or look at Protopaster's high temperature PLA, which can be annealed to resist temperatures of up to 120 degrees C or higher, which is way higher than regular PLA can handle. And if you still had any doubt that 3D printed parts can serve a practical purpose, just take a look at the Prusa i3 Mark II. This is a 3D printer comprised almost entirely of 3D printed components. And number five, 3D printers are expensive. Yes, just a few years ago, 3D printers were still very costly. You'd have to spend at least a few thousand dollars to get something that would print at least semi-reliably. But these days, that is changing extremely fast. Take the Cetus, for example. The Cetus is a low-cost 3D printer I have recently tested, and it can produce parts like this in PLA plastics on its non-heated bed. And this is a machine that will retail for around $350. And also the Fabricator Mini, a tiny 3D printer that sells for under $200 US. 
Considering the cost of consumer gadgets these days, such as mobile phones and game consoles, it's too expensive isn't really an excuse anymore. If you're truly passionate about getting into 3D printing, you'll be able to afford one. You'll be able to save up for one, just like I did for my first 3D printer several years ago. So that's gonna do it guys for this list of 3D printing myths. If you have any more you'd like to add, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to see your thoughts. And if this is your first time on Makers Muse, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss any future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews. And finally, I'd like to thank all of my patrons for supporting this channel and helping me do what I love as a full-time job. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye. Satellite into water. He is actually blocked in space.